Now, before we begin the lesson, um, I would like to address some terms, some very important terms for this chapter. We will be using these terms monomers, polymers, and macromolecules a lot in chapter 2 of biological molecules. I may use the word in other chapters as well, but it's quite important to know these terms before we begin chapter 2. Now, monomers can be basically referred to as a single unit or a subunit. Now, single unit of what? Subunit of what exactly? It can be a single unit of uh, sugar, like for example glucose. It can be a single unit of amino acids. It can be a single unit of nucleotides. These are just basically referred to as monomers. And the most important question to ask ourselves is, is it considered a small molecule or a large molecule? Most of the time we consider monomers small molecules. Now, small in relation to what? Then of course we have to see polymers. Polymers themselves are basically repeating units of similar or identical monomers. So when you have monomers which are just single units and when you join the single units together, you get something called a polymer. And I've drawn out something there for you. On the top right, you can just basically see uh, those little circles represent monomers. And at the bottom, you can see those little circles joined up with chemical bonds. And when you join it up with a chemical bond, that is considered a polymer. And of course, when we are asking ourselves the question, are polymers small or large? Very simple, polymers are considered large molecules. An example of a monomer will be glucose, which is an example of a monosaccharide. An example of a polymer is starch, which is made up when you join many glucose molecules together. So glucose is small, starch is large. And don't worry about trying to memorize that. We will be seeing this in the next video when we are talking about carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleotides, and even our lipids. Then comes the more important term, macromolecules. Macromolecules are just basically giant molecules or large molecules. It can be used interchangeably. Now, some students especially will take a step back and they may consider, wait, isn't that just a polymer? Because a polymer is a large molecule and a macromolecule is a large molecule. Why are you repeating it? See, here's where it becomes a little bit annoying. All right. All polymers are macromolecules, but not all macromolecules are polymers. What do I mean by that? Let's consider glucose. Glucose is just a single molecule. It's a subunit and it's a monomer. It's a small molecule. When you join glucose together repeatedly, you will get something known as, well, technically you can get something known as starch. You can get glycogen, right? You can even get cellulose. We will talk about that in the next chapter. But for this example, I'm just going to put starch. So starch is just basically many glucose molecule linked together repeatedly. We can consider starch a macromolecule because it's also a large molecule. Now, consider glycerol and fatty acids. Glycerol and fatty acids will be part of lipids. And when you join the glycerol and fatty acids together, what you get is a molecule known as triglyceride. But here's the thing. This triglyceride is not linked together repeatedly. It's just one glycerol with three fatty acids. That's about it. It's not linked together to form a kind of, uh, I'm just drawing something like an electrical fence over there. No, that's not what triglyceride is. Triglyceride is just basically made up of one glycerol and three fatty acids. So it's not repeated. So we cannot consider triglyceride a polymer. However, we can consider glucose and triglycerides as macromolecules because both of them are larger molecules than their subunit. So long story short over here, starch is a polymer which is also a macromolecule. Triglyceride is a macromolecule but it's not a polymer because it's not made up of many repeating units linked together repeatedly.